Hey everyone, Mark Saltzman here for Yahoo Digital Crave. Consider this an unboxing of the BlackBerry Q10. I've got the uh, media or the press version uh, of the BlackBerry Q10 that was sent out to many journalists. So as an extra treat, uh, I think you'll, you'll dig the packaging and the components are a bit different than the consumer or business version that you may be uh, buying. Uh, and then I'll give a little mini review, an informal chat about the pros and cons of the Q10 towards the end. So I uh, hope you like it. For So without further ado, let's uh, angle down the webcam and I'll show you what we got here. This is a pretty big and heavy box that contains the BlackBerry Q10. As you can see, the packaging is kind of uh, cool. It's like this an acrylic sort of opaque sort of uh, uh, finish there and yes we know what we're getting here this is the Q10 the keyboard based version of the new Blackberry uh, family uh, many have been waiting for this one so front and center the first layer uh, of the uh, of this press kit if you will has the phone by itself so that's it here this is the Blackberry Q10 I'll turn it on by pressing the button on the top and just swipe to wake it up. And as you can see, it's got a full physical QWERTY keyboard occupying almost about the third of the lower half of the uh, screen of the front of the device and a 3.1 inch touchscreen. And I'm going to get to the uh, features of the platform in a moment, but the phone is front and center, as you can see when you first open the box surrounded by this uh, material here. So lift it up and then underneath you've got all your accessories. Some of these will not be in the uh, regular version of the Q10 that you might be buying through your carrier or through your company, but I'll, I'll tell you, um, you know, what I'm referring to. So first we've got the, you know, sort of the boring stuff. This is the uh, micro USB cable to connect this uh, smartphone to your PC or your Mac in order to synchronize data and to charge up the battery. So this is just a standard USB cable. And of course you've got an AC prong as well, should you want to plug this into a wall or a power strip to charge up your device. Um, on a related note, the BlackBerry Q10's battery is very good. It's uh, in part due to the smaller screen, uh, but it'll last a few days with moderate to heavy use. Uh, and it's removable, unlike the um, iPhone, which uh, you can't remove. And on that note, you do get a second battery in the box. Again, this is just, I believe, for journalists, not the regular version, but you do get the second battery. And in fact, this is a battery in a case. So let me open this up for you and show you what's inside. You can press a button here and it'll tell you the status of the battery charge. But this is what the BlackBerry Q10's battery looks like. It's a little bit uh, longer and more slender than the other ones. And this little case in here is what you use to plug into the wall or to a computer to charge it up. You'll see the USB um, uh, connector there, as well as the ability to plug it directly in your BlackBerry. There's this little rubber uh, strip you can pull out and plug in this micro USB connection into your existing BlackBerry to give it a boost when needed instead of replacing it all together. So that's an option. So this is pretty cool. The headphones are actually pretty good for OEM, for regular bundled headphones or earbuds that you would get with a smartphone. It's got the sort of rubberized, uh, tangle-free cord. Um, they're black if you have a black BlackBerry or white if you get a white BlackBerry Q10. And um, they're quite comfortable. Um, you do get different tip sizes in the little baggie should you have smaller or bigger ear canals. And then the quality for you know your music, your audiobooks, your podcasts sounds really good. Um, and then um, there's a clip to uh, affix it to your clothing or your seatbelt. And then of course a uh, little microphone so you can take or make a call and adjust volume and press a button to pause your tunes and all that like any other sort of bundled earbuds. But they did a good job I think on the comfort and the, and you know the fit and the audio quality and I you could see I didn't uh, wrap this up very well but you do get that even when you buy the the regular Q10 there's a holster um, uh, to protect the screen of the BlackBerry and to carry it with you it does not have that belt clip on the back so um, which is fine by me never wore those but uh, this is a matching carrying case that you do get for the BlackBerry Q10 and then finally just some materials here you know, including a concierge phone number, which is nice for, for journalists to call in case we have any issues. Um, you can call 24 seven, they say. So far, so good, so I haven't needed those. And that's basically what you get in this uh, press kit. It's a lot of packaging for not a lot of contents or small contents uh, accessories inside the case. Um, so they did, a, I think, a good job for uh, the journalists to, you know, sort of get what they need to review it. And on that note, um, a couple of thoughts on what I like and dislike about the BlackBerry Q10. First, the good news. All right, so the keyboard is back. 
If you are a serious messenger, you love communicating through email, text messages, BBMs, um, other instant messaging programs, then this is for you. There have been many loyal, patient people waiting for the physical keyboard, uh, and it's back. Uh, there's not a lot of competition in this space, so um, you know BlackBerry's got a great um, market there, and uh, it is the largest keyboard out of a BlackBerry product to date, and it feels great. Um, as you can see, it's not curved like the uh, BlackBerry Bold had, um, and the Torch it is straight across, um, and with nice spaces in between each keys. It feels good. You can type quickly and accurately. Speaking of typing, there's this feature where you can type like mail. John Smith, and when you type M-A-I-L, it'll open up your mail program and the person that you're typing to. You can write text, you know, Mary Jones, and it'll do the same thing, or, or Facebook, or Twitter, other keywords that you would type on uh, the keyboard to quickly open that app without having to find it and, you know, through the icons and, and tap to open it. Another cool feature of the BlackBerry 10 platform, which includes the Z10 that came out a couple of months ago, and now the, um, the uh, Q10, is the ability to peek in at your messages while you're in an app, so you can multitask. So for example, while you're in this message and any other app, all you have to do is swipe up, let me do this here, swipe up and to the right with your thumb, and you peek in at who's writing you. So um, if it's not of any interest and it can wait, you just simply let your thumb go, and it it'll snap the app back into place. If you saw what I did there, I actually went too far over, but here just to show you again. Uh, or else it'll open up the, the hub, which has all of your messages. It's kind of hard to demonstrate f uh, this to you sideways, so I apologize. But let me just open up an app again and show you what I mean. So you'll see that flashing red light, which is another BlackBerry exclusive. You know when you've got a message waiting for you. Uh, instead of having to leave the app and open to, in order to open your messages, you can see, you can peek in at who wrote you. And you'll see, uh, here, let me just wait for this game to load. You'll see what the messages are, and if it can wait, let go, snaps the app back, or you can reply and do your business. Um, so again, here, let me just demonstrate for this. There we go. There we go. Okay, sorry for that. Hard to do it backwards. Now, what's cool about that BlackBerry Hub is it's a unified inbox. So it actually um, aggregates all of your, your incoming messages, whether it's email, texting, BBMs, tweets, Facebook uh, posts, um, LinkedIn notifications, all in one place. You can segregate it if you want, but it also brings it in together, which is cool. Other things I like about this uh, uh, phone, so d definitely the keyboard is number one, the peak and hub is number two, and the flow, just the interface. And the third is something I touched on earlier, is the battery. So not the sexiest of um, features for a smartphone, but certainly important. And I am getting you know two, three days with moderate to heavy use, with whereas my iPhone, I'm barely, I'm lucky to get half a day with all the push notifications turned on and using Siri and, and all that. So uh, that's the third thing I like. Now let's talk about some of the downsides to the BlackBerry. Number one is uh, because you've got smaller real estate, it's a, only a three inch screen, it, you're not gonna buy a BlackBerry Q10 to watch videos. You're not gonna buy it to play games. You're not gonna wanna read an ebook on this thing. You know, those, those are reserved for, for those smartphones that have a bigger screen, maybe a four and a half, a five inch, or even larger screen, better for consuming media, better for browsing the web. Um, there's a, an obvious trade off by occupy, occupying a third of the front of the phone with a keyboard. So that's something to keep in mind. On a related note, the second thing I don't love about the BlackBerry Q10 are, are the apps, um, or lack thereof. Yes, they've got 100,000 apps, that's certainly uh, a large number, but they're missing some of the big ones. They're missing Netflix, there's no Instagram, no Google Maps, which is something I use almost on a daily basis, no Flipboard, um, they only got Skype in early May. Um, so they're, they're missing some of the key apps. So you're looking at a trade-off. If you're thinking of going back from an Android or an iPhone back to a BlackBerry, you're going to, you're not going to be able to find the same apps. Um, so that's something that you definitely have to keep in mind. They're working hard to court developers to make more apps for the device, um, but keep in mind it's missing some of the big ones, you know. And then the third thing is that the, are the cameras. Um, you know, it does have this cool feature um, called Time Shift, where you take a picture and it actually takes a lot of little pictures at once, um, and then you can go back or forward through time and pick the right one when the person's not blinking. That's cool. But the eight megapixel rear camera and the you know the inferior front-facing camera just does not take great photos. So they didn't put a lot of optics or, or, or a lot of attention into the optics on this device compared to say the Galaxy S4 or the iPhone 5 
or uh, the Nokia 920, the Lumia. So there's a couple things to keep in mind. But overall, if you love messaging and you are not comfortable typing on a touchscreen, the Q10 is for you. This was designed first and foremost for those serious uh, texters, uh, and I do also mean email and BBM. So this is great in that respect. If you travel a lot and you want something that's gonna last uh, a long time on a single battery charge, then also the Q10 is for you. Do not buy this device if you're a gamer or you love watching video or if you want it to control your TV or work with your uh, you know, Bluetooth health bracelet that, that counts your steps and, and all that. It is not that kind of a lifestyle device. It's just seriously for, for, for people who want that physical keyboard. So there you have it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this mini review and the unboxing of the Q10. I'm Mark Saltzman. Thanks for watching.